Shook it up. Most of you guys who are probably watching this video have been following my competition prep for the past 20 odd weeks and you've all had a lot of questions along the way and instead of trying to half answer them within vlogs i've decided to dedicate this video today just to answer all those questions that you guys have so i'm just going to dive right in and start answering those questions some of the questions will overlap a lot of you had similar questions along the way so i'm going to answer as many as i can and get as much information over to you guys as possible if there's anything that i haven't fully answered for you if you have any other questions just hit me up below in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm just going to start at the beginning. How do you stay motivated for competition and do you track macros? Yes I do track macros. I have been tracking my macros for the past four years with a few breaks here and there but yes the way I diet is flexible and it is through tracking my carbs, fats and protein every day. Having a competition within your as your goal is kind of your motivation. When you decide on doing a competition and you set yourself the goal, obviously sometimes things come up that will thro throw you off track and maybe you won't be able to compete in that show that you had set your sights on. But I think just setting yourself the goal of competing and doing a competition is a big motivator in itself. For me personally, staying motivated, especially during this prep has been uh, the support I've gotten online from my subscribers on YouTube and from my followers on Instagram. You guys have always been just so positive and you really reaffirm why I'm doing this prep in the first place. How did you make sure you stayed on track and did you ever have refeed days? This prep I have stayed on track by hiring a coach. I felt that I need someone external to be accountable to. Previous to this, I've coached myself and this can put a lot of pressure on me and my husband who's obviously also a coach. But this time, hiring a coach, we have this external source of knowledge and an external eye to look at my physique and help guide me along the way. So I feel like that has really helped me in this prep. I did have refeed days. They weren't cheat days. They were more structured high carb days or high calorie days to boost my hormones and ensure that I stayed on track and that my metabolism didn't plateau off during my prep. I usually had one or two days a week where they were higher intake days. What's the hardest part of competition prep? Generally for everyone, the hardest part is obviously the diet and just trying to stay on track and um, not fall off the wagon because it's so easy to do that. And I suppose one thing that I've kind of missed out on during this prep is that I have sacrificed meals out with family and I have sacrificed being more social and hanging out with friends because I just didn't want to be undoing my hard work by drinking alcohol and I just didn't want to be that awkward person at a meal who couldn't eat anything on the menu and was being fussy. That's one thing, it's not even the food aspect, it's more the social aspect of going out with friends. But in the last six weeks or so, I feel like I had to just be a little bit more strict on myself and just really dial it in and be exact with my macros so I didn't feel I could eat out and be social. I know this is a bit personal but did it affect your period at all? To be honest it has. In previous preps I completely lost my period and it was something that I didn't want to happen in this prep because I don't want to affect my fertility just for a competition and to be honest I was doing my period two weeks ago and it didn't come and I've actually gotten it today which is a bit of a relief because even though it's frustrating because it's in peak week and I really didn't want to be having my period in peak week but at the same time I really don't want to affect my fertility and my cycle just for a competition I just don't think it's worth that but a couple of years ago when I was not tracking macros and was just in a severe calorific deficit I did lose my period and that's something that is a bit scary that happens to women when they diet and the thing is that you, your body starts to shut down when it doesn't have enough calories and the first thing it will do is stop the non-essential elements of your body your fertility actually for your body and looking at it biologically 
is not that important for yourself to survive so your body will shut down your fertility as a first call defense to being in a calorific deficit and that is scary because in the future you don't want to affect your ability to have children if that's what you want to do with your future and i certainly do want to have children in the near future and that was something that is very important to me that i don't lose my period uh, not fitness related at all but if any products do you use in your hair so i actually have my next episode that is coming is um, my peak week episode it will include everything that's going on this week during peak week and i have included my hair care which is quite simple and straightforward just for you guys who've been asking about my hair which is all natural no extensions stay tuned for the next episode which is the peak week episode you'll see what hair care products i use what advice would you give to a first time competitor? This is my seventh competition and it's my sixth competition prep. So one of my competitions I actually did back to back. I think my first competition was the most fun competition. But the main thing I would say is enjoy it because you can't do your first competition again. It truly is like losing your bodybuilding virginity and you can't do it again. So you have to enjoy it, take it all in, make friends. Don't get too stressed about it. Don't get too focused on placing or winning a trophy. Enjoy everything about it because honestly, it is such a fun experience getting on stage. And I think it's like, it's so brave for anyone who does step on stage because and uh, not everyone can do it so really enjoy it make the most of it and get loads of photos because you will it is the best feeling ever when you step on stage okay this is a good question what things are absolutely necessary for a bikini comp like what things can you do without or to save money on i.e nails makeup artist posing suit and hair extensions number one if you can do anything yourself and you feel very confident I do my own makeup. I have in the past hired a makeup artist and I wasn't happy with how she did my makeup because I, I enjoy doing my makeup and I'm good at doing makeup. The only thing you have to do is go and buy a darker color foundation to what you normally use. And that was simply all I did. You will have to wear heavier makeup and but it's very simple to do. Just It's kind of like going out on a night out but you have to add more eyeliner, darker colors, and you will just need to get a darker foundation and setting powder. But apart from that, you definitely can do your own makeup. I think when it comes to your tan, it's up to you how confident you feel. I've done my tan for the majority of my competitions, I've done my tan myself, but this competition, I found it always a big stress the night before of doing the layers, making sure I didn't have on, and then on the day, you have that extra stress of putting on more tan when you get there and you see how dark the other competitors are. Whereas if you use their tanners and their tanning facilities that are provided by the Federation, you're more likely to just be on point with all the other girls there because they obviously have a standard that they tan to. So I think when it comes to tan, if you really want to do it yourself, do it yourself. But definitely that could be something um, that you would spend money on. Because I don't think it's normally that expensive when you weigh up how much you're going to have to pay to buy the tan yourself and do it yourself and the stress involved with doing it yourself. When it comes to hair, I think it's up to you. Like I have my own natural hair and I have never wore hair extensions for a competition. Um, I've had shorter hair in competitions and I've seen girls who rock a short do. So again, if you're confident in styling your hair yourself, just do it yourself curl it, straighten it, do whatever you do, just use loads of product. Um, again, this is a stage setting. It's not just going on a night out and it's not the same as going to a wedding. You are gonna to have to have a lot more product. Everything is kind of bigger and um, more extreme because when you're under those stage lights, it does wash you out and your hair needs to be bigger. Everything needs to be bigger and more full on. When it comes to bikinis that is a big cost because a lot of the more embellished bikinis are very expensive they'll use swarovski crystals and they are more expensive but look for deals online and look at other competitors who might be selling their costumes sometimes the bikini designers will be selling off x 
sponsored costumes at a reduced price because they've obviously been worn before. So if you're looking to cut corners there, that might be somewhere that you can cut down the cost because the bikini is something that is quite expensive and an extravagant outgoing. I listened to your crew cast yesterday and was wondering, is it easier when you and Lex are prepping together or is it better when only one of you has cranky diet brain? Honestly, I think that dieting for a competition can be quite a stressful thing to do and to have two people doing it simultaneously can put a lot of pressure on a relationship. Lex and I have dieted before for competitions where he's done the competition prep alongside me as a way of supporting me but instead of it being a support it was actually a hindrance because both of us were quite grumpy and tired and we had zero patience for each other whereas right now Obviously Lex always counts his macros and that's a lot easier as well that he's always tracking his food but he may not be in a severe deficit but at least he's on the same wavelength as me but I would not recommend competing together unless you're in a very strong relationship where you don't bicker or anything because I know that when me and Lex have dieted and done stringent dieting together it was very hard on our relationship and we just bickered a lot and it wasn't enjoyable whereas um, this prep it can sometimes be difficult for me to watch him eating more food than me and the fact that we I have to prepare separate uh, meals for us but Apart from that, um, I think it's been a lot easier this prep with him not dieting with me because he has more patience whereas I've got very little. As an online coach, what steps did you take to start out in the business and to also get your name out there? When I started online coaching, which I'm still doing by the way, I had quite a good Instagram following and quite a good Facebook following and I just advertised on there, I put it out there that these are the results I had gotten in the past for myself and now I want to coach other people. My first priority was to make sure that I was able to coach at all, which I knew I was able to do after doing my own macros and looking after my own diet for a competition prep and being able to see what results I could get myself. And from there, I started taking on clients. I actually coach some of my friends for free in the beginning just to see if I could get the result the same results on another person so I did trial my skills on other people before I started charging people for my services but then once I felt confident the more clients I've gotten over the years and the more results I've seen and I feel really confident in coaching now and mostly I get my clients from my online following you can show your results with your clients that is the best way to show how good you are as a coach and then even from there if you don't have a huge online following you can always just show people through the gym if you're a personal trainer and do it that way but this is how I've done it is through Instagram and Facebook and now through YouTube as well. What do you look for in a coach? As I've just hired a coach for the first time the main thing I looked for was that he had the same ethics as me and the same mind frame as me that he would look to coach me the way that I would coach myself. I was looking more for someone that I knew was reliable and successful. The main thing for me was that it had to be a flexible dieting macro base and I just wanted someone really to be accountable to and to be honest the changes he's made in my diet are very similar to what I would do myself so it's just nice to have that we're on the same page and we look at the competition prep the same way. What is the full meal you dream of most while prepping for a competition? It varies from day to day what I am looking forward to eating. Some days I'll have a really sweet tooth and I really just want some chocolate. Other days I'm really craving a glass of Prosecco and then there's other days where I just really want like a pizza or something savory. So I think post competition I'm probably just going to go and get like pizza or burger and some sweet potato fries you know just like greasy salty foods followed by loads of chocolate. What has been the worst part of this prep? I think this prep the worst part has been feeling lonely and I know that's probably something a little bit unexpected that you probably think it's going to be diet but I just feel like this is the one prep where I felt quite isolated and quite on my own I haven't had a training partner I haven't had 
a lot of friends around me and I think I've done that to myself I've kind of isolated myself quite a lot in this prep and I feel like I put a lot of pressure on Lex to be there for me and I just I felt quite lonely because for the first couple of preps I've had my friends around me and I was working full time and I had friends and family around me and this prep I quite felt um, overwhelming loneliness that is why when I when I say that my online following and support has motivated me a lot during this prep I genuinely mean that because without that I, I would have felt incredibly lonely and I feel like the people who support me and follow me online have been my friends throughout this prep and I genuinely feel very thankful for every nice comment that I get because it just it spurs me on especially when I'm feeling quite isolated. Do you deplete water and or manipulate sodium during peak week? During peak week there is a slight manipulation with water but because I am a natural athlete I don't feel the need and obviously my coach doesn't feel the need to drastically manipulate salt or water intake because most of these manipulations are targeting clients who take steroids and need these manipulations to look a certain way but as a natural athlete I don't actually need the drastic manipulation. In the first half of peak week I've increased my water by one litre per day so I've gone from three litres up to four litres and I've been ensuring that I'm taking in two and a half to three thousand milligrams of sodium per day. Now that's not anything drastic, it's just enough to fill out my muscles and to make me look full. Later on in the week I will be dropping my water down to 2.5 litres per day. So again, not a drastic drop. On competition day I will be taking in some extra salts just to help fill up the muscles and just have me looking the best I can on the day. And on competition day I will be limiting my water intake just to get a more dehydrated, dry look to my physique. But I will not completely cut water at all and I will not completely dehydrate my body during the prep. What is the lowest amount in grams of carbs you have gotten down to during depletion? Normally I don't like to talk about what macros I take in because I don't like to influence others and have them think that they should be mirroring what my body is doing because right now I feel I have a very weak metabolism and that is something that in my off season I definitely want to improve upon so that next time I prep for a competition I can have more food because I have been on a very low intake on my depletion days. So on my depletion days my lowest intake has been 50 grams of carbs. This is the lowest intake I've ever had in a prep and I have found it very difficult. I found it very fatiguing and tiring. So hopefully moving forward in my future preps I won't have to go quite so low with my intake. How do you stay focused? There are days where I question why I'm doing what I'm doing, but I've set myself this challenge and I think that is what has kept me focused because I'm not a quitter. My sheer determination and stubbornness is what keeps me focused because I'm just not a person who gives up at anything. I always have to see it through to the end. Is it hypocritical to want to compete as a natural athlete in a, a non-tested show? The competition I'm going into is not tested and as I've said before, I'm a natural athlete and I don't think it is. I think you will have the challenge of being up against girls who are have that slight advantage and they will have a slight or harder look than you and I suppose you just have to go in and just be confident in what you're doing and not worry about the end result. If that's what that federation are looking for then maybe it's the wrong federation for you anyway but I think at the end of the day most people who take steroids or any shortcut tablets they just have a shorter prep period. I've been prepping for this competition for 22 weeks now that's quite a long prep but when you take into account the fact that I am a natural athlete it's not that long because I don't have these drastic weight drops. I've dropped 14 pounds in 22 weeks and that is not a drastic weight drop which you might see if you were taking something that would help that along the way. So I think you just have to allow yourself extra time to get that leanness, but you will not ever get that 
extra dry hard look that some of the girls who aren't natural will get if that's not something you want to do maybe just look for a natural competition that you can enter and a tested show how many milligrams of caffeine do you have in a day i read this last night and i actually had to go and calculate how many grams of caffeine i take and i was kind of a bit scared to do it because i was like am i going to be taking in a crazy amount of coffee but i calculated that each nespresso capsule which is mainly what I drink, um, is 80 milligrams of caffeine. Now I tend to have three caffeinated coffees a day, so that will bring me up to 240 milligrams of caffeine a day. And then I tend to have one diet Pepsi a day, which is 40 milligrams. So that's 280 milligrams a day. And then some days I may have four coffees if I'm feeling quite tired, which would bring me up to 360 milligrams a day and I have checked and the recommended intake for an adult is to be less than 400 milligrams a day so I'm under it yay I would like to get back down to two coffees a day after this prep but I feel like caffeine is really my savior right now so that's not going to happen anytime soon how do you have the willpower not to eat all the food so i don't know where i've gotten the willpower i think something just clicks in you when you start a competition prep and you suddenly become very focused on what your end goal is and that is to step on stage and be judged by a number of people in a bikini so i think with that looming over you it does stop you going and scavenging the pantry how long do you spend in the gym and how much cardio do you do for the past year or so i do four sessions of weight training per week i split that between upper and lower body i do arms first then i follow that with glutes and hamstring focus then i go to upper body again which is back and shoulders and then i do uh, quad and calf workout and I usually throw abs in there on one of the days I don't have a specific ab day and that's my training it usually takes about an hour to an hour and a half I like to do high volume training because that is what I enjoy and my weight training has not changed in any way throughout my prep and obviously throughout my prep I've had to introduce in cardio the thing with cardio is that it is a way of burning calories so you can either increase your cardio and increase your calorie expenditure or you can decrease your food now sometimes you have to do both to get the results you need but mostly from week to week it's either one or the other has changed for me you have to look at your cardio as another tool you should be tracking your cardio as you would track your food because it is something that you can play with even if you're not dieting for a competition but i think it's very important to track your cardio as if it was another macro because it's very important because it's something that you can actually manipulate do you feel your best when you are doing comps do you want to walk around like that always or is it just comp weight I, I quite enjoy the way i look right now i don't think i look too skinny i just feel like my face hasn't gotten too thin this time and i feel a lot better in myself but I think just the reduction in calories has, has me feeling very fatigued and tired. So regardless of how I look, I don't feel the best. And I am quite tiny right now and I don't fit into it. A lot of my clothes are a lot too big on me. Probably at about five or six pounds heavier, I'm probably my happiest weight because I still look really lean, really fit, and I, I, I feel more energized. So hopefully we'll get back up to that in my off season. Do you limit your sugar grams on your macros at all? No, I just, I simply track my carbs and I track fiber. So when you track your fiber, you have to get a lot more whole foods in and fruit and vegetables. I feel like I have a very healthy intake of food because I like to volumize my food with veggies. Um, I think I have very limited sugar intake anyway, but I don't track my sugar intake because um, for me it's not important. What's important is how satiated and how healthy I feel. Did you find a ticket for Lex? Yes, I did find a ticket. One of his lovely subscribers sent Lex a ticket so Lex is able to come to the competition. How do you stay positive? There are some days I don't stay positive, but I think that sometimes when I get in a negative spiral, the only thing you can do is snap yourself out of it and just say, okay, come on, get a grip. You're doing competition prep, no one has died, it's not the end of the world, you're just feeling a bit shitty because you don't have much food and you're choosing to do this. So if you want to quit, just quit. But I'm not a quitter, 
So that's what keeps me positive because I feel like I'm inspiring people and helping people along the way because I share the good and the bad. So I think that, no, I don't want to always stay positive, but I don't allow myself to remain negative for a long time. What kind of supplements or vitamins do you take regularly? The only real supplement I would take is I have protein powder and I normally bake that in cakes as you see and I take zinc and selenium as a supplement or as a vitamin. I find them to be the best supplements for me for my hair and my nails and just my nerve endings and for repair of muscle and stuff and that's really all I use. Occasionally I take a BCAA if I find I need it, but that's about it. I don't really take a lot of supplements and vitamins because I feel I just eat very well and if I'm feeling a bit run down I might take some vitamin C. Do you stretch after cardio? No. What is your post-comp plan reverse dieting doing other shows? I want to see how this competition goes because this is obviously a qualifier for the region that it's in and if I qualify for the PCA fi British Finals in October, November time, I would like to compete again. If I don't, I don't, and that'll be that decided after the competition. But the main thing is that straight after the show, competition is on Sunday, my birthday is on Tuesday. I plan on taking Monday and Tuesday off of dieting, off of tracking, and enjoying two days of fun food. And then I am going to go back to dieting on the Wednesday for four more weeks. We have an event with Gymshark in May in Birmingham. It's the Birmingham Lifts pop-up shop for Gymshark. And me and Lex are going to be there with the other Gymshark athletes. And I want to remain in peak condition. So I'm going to continue dieting because me and my coach want to see what we can do with my body with another four weeks of dieting. I know for you guys, you probably think I'm nuts, that I should just enjoy not having a competition looming, but I want to see what my body can do and how lean I can get it in an extra four weeks. So we're going to continue with the diet for another four weeks. And then after that, I will start my reverse diet because I want to improve my metabolism and I want to increase my food, put on a little bit of weight, and see what I can achieve in my off season under the guidance of my coach because that is something that I've always regretted with previous competitions that I've gotten in incredible condition for the competition and then when it came to the reverse diet I wasn't able to coach myself and I found it very hard to be accountable for myself when I didn't have a someone to check in with and someone to monitor my food intake in my off season so this is where uh, having a coach will really come into play is in my off season and then so here's fingers crossed that at least I qualify for the finals so that we can see another Laney competition prep. How do you deal with bias corruption in the com competition world? Do you think it happens and is there any way to spot it and avoid these competitions? It's very hard to predict what's going to happen on a competition day. I think the best thing you can do going into a competition is just be confident in the body you've brought to the stage. There is nothing you can do to undo someone else's hard work. For all the hard work I'm doing and how good I've gotten my body and the condition I've gotten my physique into, when I stand on stage there's no control over how good someone else's physique is. Because you are coming down to someone's opinion on the day and what they want to see, on the day of a competition, the judges might not like your physique. That doesn't mean that you haven't worked hard. That doesn't mean that you do not have a beautiful body. That does not undo the hard work you've done. But it can be, I think, a big thing for some people that they don't get a medal. But for me, it's just to get into the best condition I could get my physique into. And I feel that this is the best condition I could get my physique into at this time and under the circumstances that I've had. And that hopefully it's been a learning curve with my coach. He's learned my body. He's learned what we can do in a certain time frame. So moving forward, I'll be able to improve upon this prep with my coach, Will. So I think when it comes down to bias and 
things like that. There's nothing you can do, you can't control it. You just have to roll with the punches and just don't let it get you down. I know it can be disheartening when you put a lot of hard work in and you see something happening that isn't fair, but you just have to just be proud of what you've brought to the stage and not focus on placing or uh, what medals you get. What do you cut out from your diet on peak week? The only thing that I have chosen to cut from my diet during peak week is protein bars. And that is simply because of the polyol content and the sugar alcohol content of a lot of the protein bars I eat. Even though they fit my macros and they taste yummy, that's been probably the hardest thing I've done this week is to cut out my protein bars. But that was simply because polyols and sugar alcohols draw water into the gut and it can leave you having you know water retention around your abdomen and i want to look as lean as possible in my abs so that is why i've cut out protein bars this week but i'll be back to normal next week do you think taking the pill could interfere with muscle development for us women if you feel like the pill is hindering your progress and that it is leading to weight gain i would go to your gp and maybe switch to another form of contraception what do you find works when you get to the end of a diet and cut and need to shift those extra pounds? Carb cycling I find is really good if you put yourself into lower carb days followed by high carb days and I find for me that helps me get through plateaus. And um, Switch it up with your cardio if you find you're doing a lot of steady state maybe try some HIIT training and that could just change up but again I come back to you should always be tracking your uh, cardio as much as you are at your intake because that is always something that you can switch up and change. When I competed I always felt I had to explain why I was doing it. What's your drive to compete? I think this is something that I suppose people who don't compete can't understand the need to do it but I think when you're in the gym and you're working really hard and you want to set yourself this challenge, you want to set yourself a goal, it's the same as someone doing a marathon and um, it's the same as someone climbing Mount Everest it's like you're setting yourself this goal that you want to do something that other people can't do and you want to have this sense of achievement and I think stepping on stage for me is something that I want to do and that I want to set myself this goal because I just want to have a goal it's just like anything else any other sport you want to be the best that you at what you do and I think when you are lifting weights in the gym and you're seeing results it is something that drives you forward is to have that extra little goal at the end rather than just having the goal of I want to go on holiday and look good in a bikini you're saying I want to get into the condition that will step on stage and be judged against other girls in bikinis to see who is the best and that is an ultimate goal and I suppose it is the competitiveness within me what is the best way to start eating healthy and get back into shape? I think the best way to actually eat healthy is just to download my fitness pal app and start tracking your food. As soon as you start tracking your food, you will see where you are falling down. You will have a guideline of where you're at and where you can adjust. Sometimes I think some people think they're eating healthy, but when you actually start tracking it, you may have a very high fat and carb intake and quite a low protein intake. So start tracking your food and then you can adjust from there. There's also loads of online macro calculators that you can use that will give you a rough guideline of where you're at with your food and where you should be at. If you find that you've been tracking your food and that you've used these online calculators and you're still not seeing results, then maybe that is the point where you should hire a coach to have someone there who you can be accountable to and who will specifically tailor make macros to suit you, your metabolism and your activity levels, your lifestyle, everything about you. That's where it's important to get a coach. Are your macros different on training days versus non-training days? During this prep, my macros have been the same on both days. On my higher carb days, my refeed days, I haven't done cardio because my coach has wanted me to soak up as much of the glucose from the higher carbs as possible. So I didn't, I tended not to do cardio on those days. But apart from that, there has been no change. Moving forward, this may change and all coaches are different as to how they approach this. 
Do you plan your macros a week ahead, four weeks ahead, 12 weeks ahead? How do you know when it'll be a low carb day? That's a good question, but obviously I have a coach who is doing my macros. So usually I check in with him once a week and from there he will adjust my macros. With my own clients, I do the same. They check in with me on a Monday and then I adjust their macros from there. So guys, I think I've answered most of your questions. Some of them were repeating there, so I didn't go through them a second time. I hope you enjoyed this Q&A and I hope you enjoy the rest of my content for this series that's coming up. I have my peak week episode which should be up on Monday and then obviously the season finale will be up next week. I hope you enjoy this and if I haven't answered your question or you have further questions just hit me up in the comment box below and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Cause if I only had a hundred fans, I'd take them out to dinner, talk about the people that we used to be. If I had a hundred fans, fly them all to Paris, ain't nobody paying, I'd be buying the drinks. And we would cloudy, and we would dance, and we would throw up our damn hands until they turn to crowds. Yeah, I got you now, if I only had a hundred fans. Life's too short to be an asshole.